whole, they honor very, very much. I mean, they're sticklers on the, that weekly Sabbath, but they're, they're losing out of the bigger picture. That's why Jesus did good things on the Sabbath day, because that was just symbolic. Where did the, 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 the commandment to honor the Sabbath day come in to play? Yes. Uh, Ten Commandments. Ten Commandments. Deuteronomy and Exodus. And what does it say specifically? Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Okay. It says exactly, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. To keep it. So it's okay. Nothing unholy, no sin is going to enter into that Sabbath day. Okay. Let me take your mind a little bigger. Okay. The Sabbath day is an actual period of time. Mm -hmm. Everything on earth is symbolic of what's really manifested in heaven. The tabernacle mm -hmm. is an earth, heavenly, earth, heaven, I mean, earthly tabernacle is symbolic of what? Heavenly, heavenly temple. The, the earthly temple is symbolic of the heavenly temple. Okay? The, Jesus, God was given the Ten Commandments says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy because there remain of the Sabbath. And what, what's a key phrase of the Sabbath day? About the Sabbath day. What's a key phrase about the Sabbath day? What's the main importance of the Sabbath day? Or what is the purpose of the Sabbath day? Yeah, of rest. Rest. Key word, rest. Rest from labor and work, okay? That's what it is. There's going to come a time of complete rest. Hebrew talks about we, we will enter to the rest, right? We're in the Lord. When you get saved, feel the Holy Ghost, you, you have ceased from your sins, you've rested in the Lord. But he says there remains yet another rest that we have to enter into. That's that Sabbath day. That's a futuristic day. We talked about end time prophecy. We talked about the tribulation. We talked about millennial reign. But after millennial reign, there's a day yet remaining, and that day is called the Sabbath, Sabbath day. Okay. In the book of Genesis, a lot of people read it as something that's already done. The book of Genesis is in a process. When you talk about creation, how many believe the creation days were 24 hours? Raise your hand. I don't want to see. <laughs> 24 hour days. No. How many believe they were longer than 24 hour days? Okay. We don't know how long they were. There are periods of time. You read the book of Genesis, these, says these are the generations. And what makes a day? Again, what what what, what constitutes a day? In, in, in scientific, I'm gonna ask the teenagers. Are you anybody? Or what's what's a day? A day. What's a day? Twenty-four hour period. Twenty-four hour period. Jasmine, what's a day? Twenty-four hours. What's a day? Anybody else? Twenty-four hours. Yes. From sunset to sunrise. Okay, that's a Jewish day. Yes. Uh huh. But when you say day, you gotta you gotta ask the question relative to what? A day on this earth is, one day is 24 hours, okay? A day on Jupiter is longer than that. Probably that's 80 hours. A day on Mars might be asked four or five hours. It's, but a day constitutes two parts, an evening, evening and, the and the morning, okay? So the sixth day of creation, he says in creation, the first chapter, the second chapter, evening and morning was the first day. That's a period of time. The first day... Earth was covered with water. Second day, land appeared. Third day, on down. And it said, on the sixth day, he created man, right? I believe we're currently living in the sixth day of his creation. Okay? We're, in, don't, we're going through that right now. And the and, and, and book of Genesis says, on the seventh day, God rested, right? Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, has God ever rested in history yet? <laughs> Since he made man. So that's a futuristic thing. Pray that you enter into that Sabbath. Pray that you enter into the Lord's rest. He's not resting right now. That's a futuristic day. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Okay. So we got to keep ourselves clean from this world, unspot because there'll be no sin entering into that Sabbath day. That's why. That's why it's significant. When we talk about the Ten Commandments and that Sabbath day, that is a real time, which is in the future, and we want to enter into that rest. Okay. All right. And now, what I'm trying to say is right now is our day of preparation. Very significant. Very important. Because if we don't be prepared, we won't enter in. Okay? Let's, let's go.
go back to the, Brother Wayne talked about the day of preparation before they left Egypt. That's symbolic of us leaving this earth, going to being called away, okay? First of all, Israel, when they celebrated the Passover, one thing, they had no leaven in the house. No, nine, no, not just no leaven bread, no leaven. No little packs of yeast. Nothing, no sin. So you got to get your body. Second, they had to be dressed. You're closed on, ready to go. Third, you had to have your feet, shoes on your feet. Okay? Fourth, they had to be eating bitter herbs. Fifth, you got to have your staff in your hand. Sixth, you got to eat in a hurry. Okay? So that's what the Jews had to do before they left Egypt. Coming down to us, we got to be ready to get out of here. The rapture is coming. We got to be ready. What are you going to do? First, no sin in our lives. You got to clean your house. I mean, if sin comes there, what you do? Clean it out. If, if you if you sin, what do you do? Confess it. He, he's faithful and just. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us. Cleanse all unrighteous. So confess it. Get rid of it. Don't don't. No hidden sin, secret sin. Get rid of it. Okay. No sin in life. Get rid of all the leaven. Two. We got to be dressed. <laughs> what are you going to be dressed with? Robe of righteousness. The garment of praise. We got to have your clothes on. Don't be getting, putting your clothes on. Got to be dressed already. We don't get to be righteous right now. Well, I'm going to be righteous right now. Now, get dressed. <laughs> Shoes <clears throat> on your feet. What does that represent? <laughs> feet shod with the preparation. There you go. <laughs> feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. That's right. It also talks about in, in the armor of God. Put on the whole armor of God. Feet shod, okay? Put your shoes on. No time to put your shoes off, man, okay? All right? How about eating a bitter herb? What does that represent? Young people? Old people? Middle-aged people? What's a bitter herb? What does he tell you right up front? It's a suffering way. You're going to go through suffering. I'm going to take you out of Egypt, uh, but I'm going to remind you oh. of the suffering you went through, and you're going to still face some things. Scripture says, many are the joys, the pleasures, no, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them out of them all. So eat the bitter herbs, this walk with God, this is preparation. Why do I got to go through this, Lord? This is your day of preparation. I'm preparing you. I'm getting you ready to get out of here. Okay? Why do I go through this test of trial? See, we, 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 we don't relish it when we're going through it. But once we get through, whew, look back. How I get over it? And, and I'm saying, and I, I said it for my testimony, that my hip hurts every now and then. You either saw me when I went on my vacation. I was excruciating pain. Couldn't hardly move. But guess what? It went away, and I felt so good. Amen. But my mind goes back to when the pain was. So when you go through tests and trials, mm -hmm. it's to, to let you know you're going to go through some. You, you're going to suffer for his sake, okay? If you can't suffer with him, you can't reign with him, okay? But you're going to suffer not as an evildoer, but suffer for righteousness sake, okay? But keep it. The bitter herbs will remind you. Why, you know, why do people pick on Why do people talk about this is, this is a walk with God. Jesus had to do it. He had, he had to suffer, go through the fire, okay? So, the frictions, bitter herbs. And you got to have your staff in your hand. What is the staff in your hand? Somebody can help me with that one. The Bible. The what? The Bible. The Bible or the Word. <laughs> okay. The Word, the Word of God, which is also a what? A sword, which means you got to do what? Fight. Fight. <laughs> Listen, you got to fight. You're not fighting each other. You got to fight the devil. Fight the adversary. Spiritual warfare, okay? Let me, let me, okay, Brother Wayne, you might answer this question. When he took them out of Egypt, there was a direct route from Egypt to the Promised Land, right? Yes. And why did he do that? Why, uh, so, okay, why did he take them the direct route for to to the Promised Land from Egypt? It was like a four-day journey or a forty-day journey. It took about forty years. But why did he take them the direct route? Because they didn't have faith. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good answer. 
Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Other than Chris, I know you got them hold you. Oh, okay. In, in the reserve. Yeah, yeah. In, anybody I know? I may not be ready to wait. Huh? <laughs> no, he didn't take them. She took them a roundabout way. Oh. And God takes you a roundabout way they sometimes, too. They well, no, before they, before they even murmured, he took us and I ain't taking them to the Philistines, to the land of Philistines. I'm taking them to the wilderness. Huh? Prepare them for the kingdom. Yeah, but there's a specific reason. I want you to remember this. And you, you read it in Exodus, uh, I think the 13th chapter of Exodus. He said, God said, I'm not going to take them to the land of Philistines because they have to fight. <laughs> the Philistines are going to fight them. And they're not ready for a war yet. <laughs> he had to take them and get them prepared in the wilderness so they can be fight. So God, when you get saved, you know what? You're in a honeymoon period. How many experienced that honeymoon period? Mm -hmm. Mine lasted two weeks. <laughs> so I was on illumination, but I wasn't I wasn't ready to fight there, but, but later on test and trials come. He don't allow no more to come upon you than you're able to bear. But with the temptation is your way of escape. Okay? So when you have the staff in your hand, the staff represents support, the word of God. So lamp to my feet, like my pathway, it's also a sword, okay? It's a weapon to fight the adversary. All right? And the last thing is you got to be in a <coughs> hurry. <laughs> Eat it quickly. Don't wait for tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. God calls you, do it. Don't wait. It's not promised. Today is the day of the day you hear my voice. Harden not your heart, as in a as in a provocation. Okay, it's not promised. Tomorrow's not promised. We gotta be in a hurry. You know, listen. If you don't watch the news or the, or the newspaper, he is soon to come. Earthquakes. I thought I felt an earthquake last night. Joyce said, "I don't know." Did anybody feel an earthquake last night? No, I didn't. Was there one? What? No, I'm talking about here. I'm talking about here. Melvin? But Melvin, did you feel one? I'm talking with one in Japan. Oh, man, I didn't feel that one. <laughs> that must be my imagination. But I was saying, so, oh, Lord. <laughs> I want to get ready. Signs of the time are here. Amen. Okay? So we got to be prepared. Now is the day of preparation, okay? Are you prepared?